right, so we'll look at the uh, the comps here. Okay, so interesting Neo Splash build. This is way more aggressive. There's no bomb range, which I don't like. There is a special saver, which I do like. Um, I still like Kiver's um, choices here. I think that he, uh, I, I think that he has the better build. I think that this is an interesting build, though. Um, that's basic. This is effectively two mains of swim speed, so you're taking advantage of the light depletion. You have the sub saver because you know the burst bombs are important. You have the special saver because bomb rush at the end. That's awesome. Um, we have just the full blown efficiency build on the the custom dually squelcher. That's awesome because you can't go for main power, so you might as well um, go for um, just painting at the end. Uh, the only problem I have with the steam comp is that it's missing a little bit of slang. I mean, you have a slasher deco, yes. And, I mean, I guess it's the same for what EU is running, but look at EU's synergy here. They have um, long-range splash damage, mid-range splash damage, mid, you know, mid-range splash and chip damage, mid-range splash and chip damage, right? So you have the ability to work together and get kills with this comp to make up for the lack of slaying. What does Australia have to do that? Well, they do have the slosher. They don't have bomb range on the splash. Um, ironically, they don't have main power on the, the, the CDS. So that that, that, that kind of changes things a little bit. And then you have the um, you have the ball point. So while you, you still have some range to be able to work together, I don't think it's anything compared to what EU's bring in. I really like EU's comp. I think that they had potential to win last game. They just they did not play as well as NA. Um, NA was like, hey, we're going to be confident, we're going to get kills, we're going to work together and get kills. EU kind of made some bad decisions that kind of fell apart. Maybe they're a little bit nervous game one. I mean, it doesn't matter because they end up fighting NA after this anyway, and it just ends up working with the same seeding that we've seen before. Um, or Also, Urza with the, the Ninja Squid, I like that. Yeah, nine, right? That the 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 the, um, the sprinkler buff is pretty important. Definitely, it gives that easy entry into the enemy side of the map. So if we get to see any top down view, which I think is something that the that I should have told Zar this. I should have told Zar that at like the one minute pass mark, you should look at the map top down, because an important part of turf war is the beginning of the game. You're supposed to go like full blown ADHD, OCD, just get every single inch of your base, because a big part of turf war in games where you can't dominate is chipping away at base paint, because um, base paint forces a team to give up mid to fix. And it has, if you have very thorough base paint and the enemy doesn't, you're at a huge advantage when it comes to the end because that, that percentage adds up like crazy. You can basically lose mid, and if your your base is painted and the enemy team's isn't, it, you'll you'll still win. Especially if the enemy team's base is paint, is not painted because you painted it with things like ink storms and bombs and and, and all kinds of things earlier on in the game. So that's something to think about. Yeah. Jordan's right that there's no real advantage here, and this is looking bad for EU if uh, uh if they don't get that kill. Yeah, I was to say. Well, actually, no one followed up on it. And again, so uh, that's actually a perfect example of what I've been talking about. So right here, um. Australia is obviously alive. They have map control. And now we have a Slosher and a Neo Splash pushing these guys back. And there are people... What a great place to stop. Now we see that there are um, people alive, right? So we, what do we know about what's going on right now? Well, we know that Will... What weapon is that? So the Slosher is going to be here. And we have someone else alive over to our right. So we know that two are left. Let's choose a color that actually stands out here. I'll go with green. Um, no, let's go with let's go with blue. Okay. So we know that the custom dually squelcher is over here somewhere. We know that. One of the two other weapons, because we saw the arrow, is also over here. 
And then we're going to have the Slasher Deco push up on these guys. He has splash damage. He can do something. Now watch what happens. Where's my get out of here button? There's the get out of here button. Now watch what happens. The Slasher Deco pushes up, gets hit on Urza. None of these weapons, none of these backup weapons are able to help. Everybody on EU is able to combine fire. Even Urza, who just has a slasher, he's really smart. He has splash damage. Gray has burst bombs. Soren has the explosher. Um, and there's bomb range involved. Well, there's not bomb range involved on the mini, but the main weapon happens has more damage. And, you know, th there's a bunch of splash damage able to help. The custom dually squelcher can't help. The neo splash can't help. The ballpoint probably could help, but it's hard for the backline to get in that position compared to an explosher. And... Now, see that that burst bomb couldn't make any any ground. Kiver is able to bomb rush because the other members of his team have the the splash damage and ability to, to help each other out. See, look at all this. Look at all the splash damage. Burst bomb. Let's go and watch that again. So this doesn't get the kill here, but this just illustrates that when you do stuff like this enough times, it's gonna it's gonna help. And it's pushing people back. So we have a burst bomb. We have the mini with longer range. We have somebody just got taken out probably by the explosher, maybe with the help of Gray over here to the right. And then so watch what ends up happening here. One, two, three people participating and chasing this person while Gray moves up. That That's why this kind of top comp is so good, because of all the... Especially on LAN, when the burst bomb splash damage and the paint happen like as you see it, and doesn't have like latency online if it's not a direct. You, the team is so able to work well with each other. Alright, now we have Australia trying to push out of the base. We have a bomb rush going off. But again, who's taking advantage of this bomb rush? I mean, we do have Geo able to push up, and Urza does get taken out. There's an effective trade. But they're really not able to to do things to punish the bomb rush. Geo's forced to back up. Now he is working on the bomb rush, which is good. Ooh, he almost gets that pick on Soren. All right, Soren gets this, this in. Gray moves up. Splash damage, and yeah, this is really hard to push back on because everybody on Alliance Rogue can help each other out. And they have splash damage to punish it, to punish people who try to get out of mid. Ooh, nice. And that's just an outplay. And yeah, Australia's team comp is really not able to get out of their base. They have the Bomb Rush and Inkstorm, which is good. They have the Baller, which is good. But it's like the main weapons can't compete with all the Sharky Splash damage. Like, see, every single time one of these, tries, one of these guys tries to shoot one person, like, that's this is a great uh, example. So let's watch what Geo tries to do here. So first off, he can't use his Bomb Rush because there's Splash damage. He sees Urza over here. He tries to go after Urza. And Soren shoots at him from the left. So it's just... No matter what you do, someone else on the enemy team is able to try to stop you, and that's why this comp is so good. Now we have, and we have a member down. Like, yeah, this is this is basically GG. Yep. Try to go after the slasher. The explosher starts shooting at you. Actually, get some kills right there, but yeah, everybody goes down. Gray just takes out Geo, the rest of his team pushes up. Even if Geo got the kill there, that wasn't happening. Every single little bit. See this bomb rush right here too? I don't know if they were if they were burst bombs or bomb rush or what, but one, two, three. This looks like a bomb rush to me. Four, five, six. All of this kind of paint not only gives you more, but it takes away from the base paint like I was talking about, and it just basically makes it impossible. So even if, like, Gray had lost that fight, the fact that AR's base is this thoroughly painted at the end, you can lose mid and still win if you have Kiva running around like this. So it's just, that I mean, that, it was just a wipe at the end. Basically impossible to recover from. I mean, Alliance Rogue was dominating that whole game anyway. And they shut down what looked like a desperation push. You know, like a last ditch effort push from um, from Australia. All right, so waiting, guys. By the way, if anyone has like a, like a question, just let me know because I'm watching chat the whole time. Like, I I mean, obviously we're we're not getting that much activity at chat right now, but I am I am paying attention. I do suck. I do suck. So 
let's open this not beer and let's watch um, how Japan because Japan fought Australia first also this tells me I have not watched any e3 yet Frank the beer fest I was at had like no service and when we were in the room when we were in like the apartment we um we just played like games and watched stuff like we were just being social so oh, I accidentally moved the camera so uh yeah I, I I haven't seen any of the gameplay but uh no the the seeding of the, so the matches tell me that the seeding of this tournament was Japan then EU then NA then Australia right so NA came in third seed and, and outperformed because Japan is obviously first seed which means that and then EU went up against NA and um, Australia, which is an easier, which is an easier pool for them. Whereas NA has to fight Japan. So NA, but it doesn't really matter that much because NA and EU are going to fight each other anyway. But uh, but yeah, it was well. Uh, custom jet is really really good on land. I was talking about it a little bit before. So the way burst bombs work online is if you get a direct on your screen, the direct goes through. However, um, paint and non-direct damage are calculated actually in two different spots. So so non-direct damage is calculated on the um, opponent screen that's getting hit, just like any other explosive that isn't a blaster in the game. Then on top of that, paint is calculated by the host so if you want to go for a direct you go for on, when you're playing online if you want to go for a direct you just go for the direct if you want to get paint you have to throw the bomb in front of them and if you want to get chip damage you have to throw the bomb in front of them but the paint and chip damage might not happen at the same time um so it makes burst bombs really inconsistent online online after all that said and done on land that doesn't happen so what what burst bombs um, things like Explosher, Inkjet, they get way better on land than they are online. Um, that's why, like in Splat 1, uh, if you heard tier lists, a lot of times you'd see the tier list and you'd be like, blah, 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 blah. And Custom Jet is also top tier on land only. That, that was a thing. Like, Custom Jet was considered top tier on land only. Because, um, the little paint that it did at max range actually mattered more. Burst Bombs were way better, and Custom Jet was a really good weapon at, like, getting in burst bomb damage and then picking someone off with it. Um, but that didn't work as consistently online. So custom jet was like mid tier was like, you know, lower high tier, mid tier online, upper high tier to bottom of top tier on land. Uh, and I don't know if that's why custom jet is picked. Um, you know, there's also things like uh, heavy can't run everything it wants to run on land all kinds of stuff like that. But I know that Custom Jet is better on land than it is online because of the way burst bombs work. So that's something to consider. Alright, so I'm pretty sure... I saw the beginning of this, I didn't see the end. So I think that like Japan just gets some picks. Oh, let's look at team comps, so... Seen it already, like it, seen it already, like it, comeback could be Ninja Squid. Are they doing it? No, actually, no, they have the comeback, too, so maybe I'm wrong. Um, I mean, comeback is one of the value mains, so I still I, I still like it. I feel like comeback could be replaced. I mean, it does give run speed, but I don't know. Um, so, like it, like it. Uh, bomb defense is weird. Why are you running bomb defense? Maybe it's because you know that Japan's going to be bringing the custom jet. Maybe it's because you know they're going to be bringing the bubbles. That's a little bit weird to me. Um, th I mean, this is obviously being teched in. This, this bomb defense is being used for a reason. So either this comp that we see is what Kyo was aware of. Maybe they watched the other matches because I didn't check the, the comps on the very first game. So it could be that they just watched Japan and said, oh, wow, I should use bomb defense because I'm the Slayer and I have the flexibility. Or... They simply um, were told, they, they found out that Japan was using a comp at some point, and they said, we're going to run bomb defense versus them. Um, I don't know if the comp that Japan bought is the comp that they were preparing for, but just looking at it, we see a baller, we see bubbles, we see burst bombs. 
and we see another baller. So all of the weapons that Japan is using do get affect by, affected by bomb defense. So I think it's I think it's a even if they were oh god that's a flashlight. I thought it was out of batteries. I just shot something. Um, even if this isn't the comp that they prepared for, the bomb defense should still work. Let's let's go look at that beginning again. So, Tune trying to paint up. I think he kind of got into mid a little bit too fast, and the jet picks him off. Um, just because Shaq could have helped there, but he was painting the base. So here goes the Stingray. Oh, also, what was uh, the custom jet? The, cu the custom jet was running quick jump two mains of bomb range. That's a good, that's a good uh, LAN jet build, I think. Also, let's talk about Japan's comp. Um, so they have splash damage out of the Explosher. They have splash damage out of the jet. They have long range chunk chunk damage out of the ten umbrella, and then they just have this aggressive support. So, I think this is kind of like EU's team comp, where they are able to help each other out a lot, like a lot, a lot. Um, and then if you have someone who's really good with the L three, they can semi slate. Now this is definitely lacking in slaying power, but like Nine and Jordan were just talking about, this is definitely a longer range map that kind of requires that longer range stuff um it just definitely shows that these japanese players are really really fucking good at what they do if they're able to do something such as uh you know bring a comp like this with basically zero frontline presence at all and still win with it um then again it is turf war and that's kind of the same boat we've been seeing at everyone How are they going to get out of here? Here comes the bomb rush. No one's really pushing up with it. There goes the stingray. There goes the bomb rush. But I don't know if that was like pretty. Where, where was everyone on on FTW during this? So Shaq jumps back. Kyo's dead. So Kyo is respawning right now. We're about to have ball. This bomb rush goes off. So I think that what happened here is I think that. I think that we have, let's pick a color that works here. We'll go with red. So I think that we have the uh, the baller almost ready. We got 94 right here. We have Shaq right here with the bomb rush. And then behind the camera to like our left, we have um, Kyo responding. I think that this bomb rush is a little bit too soon because if the baller was moving, if Instead of being over here, Toon was, you know, like, on this corner and then moving here. And I'll just clear this real quick. If that was happening, so if, like, let's look at Shaq's perspective. If Shaq is doing this while there is a, a baller moving this way and Keo able to kind of move this way, while the stingray comes off from this angle, that's going to be great. But what happens instead is you have a um, you have a bomb rush going off, which is slow. It can't move. It can't move up with what it's doing. And then you have a stingray going off, which is also slow. And then you have the two fast weapons. not able to participate so you just bomb rushed and you sting raid you push them back and by the time the two frontliners get to move up uh they're basically there's going to be nothing allowing them to get map control anymore especially since there's three specials ready by the enemy so you really this was bad special coordination in my opinion i think the bomb rush went off too early and kind of forced everything out of everyone else but now look at what's happening tune gets taken up by the two counter specials Dynamon and Taji are able to push up, so that was that was a bad um, that was a bad attempt at a retake, in my opinion. I think the bomb rush was popped a little bit early. I don't know. I'm not trying to blame Shaq or anything like that. It could have been anybody's call. Uh, but Keo was not in position. Toon was almost in position. You have to bomb rush has to be used. 
Yeah, yeah, right idea, bad timing. Bomb Rush has to be used in a way where other specials or other players are applying the pressure that allows for the Bomb Rush user to do its thing. Um, same thing with Stingray. Like, using a Bomb Rush when your team can't push up with the Bomb Rush is like using a Stingray when your team can't take advantage of the Stingray. You did that twice. Um, I think that the Bomb Rush went off at the wrong time, and that caused the Stingray to respond by like, well, fuck it, I'm going. I'm doing it, you know? And it's just the two Slayers weren't in position. Uh, because if that bomb rush and that stinger have going off and like you know kill the bubble user, you know stop the jet and the explosher from being able to stand in one spot, force those ballers out early and let Shaq just hold max range bomb range and just just clip the, one of the ballers once or twice. That would have totally allowed FTW to get in, um, but instead they just get really pushed back. Now there is one person that gets taken out. Ooh, this is uh, a strain. Ooh, what's gonna happen here? Yeah, and then you have, like, Kyo jumping. So this is... NA just looks really antsy right now. They look like they're they're hitting... They're hitting big, powerful buttons. Just the, the instant that, that it's even possible to. And it's just not working out for them. Like, here's a Stingray that... I, I don't know. Like, everything NA is doing right now just seems super nervous. Shaq is doing a good job at taking mid right now. And this could work. So... I think that, you know, you do it enough times, it's going to work. So that, you know, that's happening right now, and we have Toon kind of pushing up right now. He might get taken out. Yep. But, yeah, I think uh, I think FTW was just playing really just not coordinated enough. I think specials are being used the second they get them. I think that, uh, I think people are kind of separated. Or when we're leading to the last minute, we have one up for uh, for FCW, but we also have like full map control, beacons everywhere. There's a baller sharking over there. This is gonna be really hard. Ooh, that was not a one on one. That was a two v one. Kyo's just kind of taken out by this ray. Yeah. Yeah. Trying to avoid one of the best rays on the planet when you have nothing to help with. That is going to be a, a, a big, a, a big oof. Oh, yeah, and that was just... I mean, we can go over that last 30 seconds again. But, I mean, like we talked about, there's just all kinds of specials ready. Uh, now we have a baller from FTW. But what, what did that baller do? I don't really see anyone pushing up with it. Yeah, and then someone was pushing up with the person they tried to go after. That Ray goes off. And yeah, yeah, no, it's it's basically, the game's already over at this point. Taj is going to be able to paint north. Yeah, Shaq and Ice are trying. But yeah, the snipe goes off once. and Or not even the snipe, just the, the long-range weapon gets it. There's like a trade, yeah. It's like, basically all, like this, this little kill at the end here is just kind of circumstance. FTW basically needed to just get a quad earlier than they were able to get a quad. That was a battle that was won on the weapon select screen. You could see that the GG boys came in with an idea. We're going to put Etna up at the top. We're going to distract as many people. I disagree with Nine. Nine says that this was a, a match loss of the, the weapon select screen. I do not agree at all. I think that FT wins comp was fine. I believe that Japan's comp was a risk. And FTW just didn't play well. Um, I don't know. In my opinion, they kind of threw right there. But uh, in the end, it probably didn't matter. In fact, I think that it's better for an A that they lost this game because that means that they get to fight EU with, with actual modes after this and win the grudge match. Because imagine if NA had won. Well, I'll just let this go because we're going we're gonna to search out the, the next instance of gameplay. Imagine if NA had won this and gone 2 0. They beat Australia. Japan beats EU probably, and then it's Japan and NA in finals anyway. Um, Japan wins. We never get to see the grudge match between EU and NA, and there's this, all this unresolved shit talk. That's actually a bad timeline. 
the way this ends up going uh, ends up going instead is that Japan wins NA and EU have the crazy grudge match that goes to the final game the shit talk gets resolved the, the tournament's more hype so I think this is better but yeah I disagree with Nyan entirely I do not think that was a team comp thing I think that was just um, that was just FTW playing super nervous uh, jumping the gun all the time and just never really having the, the, the coordination that they needed Which, from what I understand, goes away later in the tournament. I mean, they beat you twice. 